the reality is the Treasurer is having now to produce some of the many of the same arguments that Wayne Swan had to produce a number of times during his Treasurership, which is essentially that things beyond his control, beyond the Treasury's control, have, uh, have played havoc with budget projections and so here we are uh, having to uh, admit that you know, promised surpluses or promised paths back to surplus aren't going to be achieved. And that's really what Joe Hockey has said here today. And he's also gone on to say, and I think this is an important sort of economic but in very important political point, he's saying the budget bottom line is the thing that's going to take the hit, not the economy itself. So not growth and not jobs. We're going to absorb the impact of slower global growth and uh, you know, uh, less income from, uh, from exports. We're going to absorb that in the form of extra uh, an extra large deficit rather than by trying to make up those savings uh, through, other, through other spending cuts which would affect uh, economic growth and confidence and, and jobs therefore in Australia. So a bit of a Keynesian uh, little uh, sort of flavour to uh, what, what Joe Hockey is talking about there. This is always a difficult question to ask a political correspondent because your job is really to report on what happens here for the people out there rather than reporting on what the people out there think. But if you had to guess, how do you think this message will go across? Well, I think it will go across in two ways. I mean, I, I, as I say, I think people will be uh, generally happy once they understand the arguments the Treasury is putting forward. They'll be happy that the government isn't unveiling further cuts to make up for lost revenue. Uh, because that would have a dampening effect on the economy and, the econ and growth is very delicate at the moment. One of the things that uh, you'll note in the budget is that uh, consumer confidence has been revised down since the budget in, in this MyEFO, so they are actually accepting, the government is accepting that consumer confidence is, is a bit low and has taken a bit of a hit at the moment. The government is aware that confidence is delicate and uh, so that's one of the things that's been revised down. So I think out there, uh, in, in short, in answer to your question, people will be glad the government's not uh, making further cuts. And there's been an indication that uh, budget number two, when we get to it in May, will not be as severe as budget number one either. The Prime Minister's made that point, and I think, again, voters will be generally happy about that, and probably markets too. Can the government sell this message? The message, the overall package, well, that, that is going to depend on how well the Treasurer performs, really. And if you were going on form, you would say no. But I think the Treasurer has made some, um, some pledges to, uh, to his team and to the Australian people that he will be better at the communications task in 2015. And we expect a response uh, shortly from Opposition Leader Bill Shorten and Shadow Treasurer Chris Bowen. What's the weakness? What will they be pointing at? Well, I mean, you can understand uh, the word I used on the weekend in one of my pieces was schadenfreude, and you could certainly understand Labor being more than a little bit miffed about uh, a government coming out and pleading for understanding, saying, look, you know, uh, we, our, our uh, revenue has fallen, uh, we're going to have to sort of change what we promised to do. This is what Labor did, and this is the sort of thing which, uh, as Shadow Treasurer, uh, Joe Hockey gave Labor absolutely no room to do, and similarly Tony Abbott gave Labor absolutely no room to do it. They condemned the Labor government for, for, you know, for folly and incompetence and everything else. Now they're doing a similar thing themselves and for similar reasons. Uh, so I expect Labor to be pointing that out a lot.